Hi everyone, hope your pest cleaning is coming along nicely, but don't stress if it's not, there's still time. So this week we're starting a new book, the book of Vayikra, and the opening line is Vayikra el Moshe, and he, he being Hashem, called to Moshe, Yedabe Hashem a love, Hashem spoke to him, may Ohel Moed, from the Ohel Moed, which was a part of the Mishkan, Lamar is saying. And we're going to go on to talk about what he says. But it's interesting, Rashi comments quite a lot on this verse about this calling out. So he says, Hashem calls out to Moshe. It says, Vayikra el Moshe. But he says, there's a voice that comes out, but it only goes to Moshe. So what does that mean? He seems to be implying that there's a voice coming out, but only Moshe hears it. He's the only one that actually hears it and understands and responds and then has a conversation with Hashem. So my question is, why can nobody else hear it? It's not like Hashem's got a quiet voice. We know, you know, a few weeks back when he gave us the Torah at Har Sinai, he had this massive, loud, booming voice, which gave us all a massive shock until we actually asked Moshe for him to stop speaking. So it's not like he had a quiet voice that nobody could hear. When Hashem's speaking, it's loud. So why can't we hear it? Why did the rest of the people not hear it? Why did only Moshe hear it? So the other the other point is that makes it even more interesting is that a few weeks ago, um, well, it was actually only a few days ago, really, a few months ago in this Sedra, um, that the whole of the Jewish people did hear his voice. They were able to hear it. So what's happened between then and now? What's happened between Har Sinai and this day, the beginning of Ayikra, when they're dedicating the Mishkan that they've been building? What's happened in between that stopped them being able to hear it? So I think if you look through the stories, it's obvious that the massive event that changed things for them was the Egel, their sin where they worshipped the golden calf. At Har Sinai, they were on a really, really high level and they were able to hear Hashem's voice. And then their level plummeted when they worshipped the golden calf and they weren't quite on the same level anymore. Now, it's interesting from a scientific point of view, what is a voice actually? It's sound waves and sound waves are energy. Now, there's two ways of describing sound. There's amplitude, which is how loud or quiet it is. And there's also frequency and wavelength, which determine, which describes um, how um, the sound moves through the air. There's different frequencies, which is to do with the pitch, whether it's a high pitch or a low pitch. Now, I used to be a high school science teacher and we did this really cool experiment where I had this machine that was emitting a sound and I didn't change the volume, but I did change the frequency. And I asked the girls to put up their hand when they could hear the sound and to put their hand back down when they could stop hearing the sound. Now you'd think if it's the same loudness that everyone can hear the sound, you know, regardless, but actually it was really interesting. There were some girls that could hear a much lower frequency and there were some girls who could hear a much higher frequency and they almost couldn't believe that anyone else couldn't hear it and vice versa as well. The girls that couldn't hear it couldn't believe that there was a sound that they couldn't hear because we're used to thinking about sound in terms of loudness but not in terms of frequency, in terms of the pitch. But in everyday English we do talk about this as well. We describe somebody as being on our wavelength which means that you know, we connect with them in a certain way. We get them or they get us. We're on the same wavelength. So I think it's more of a case of this that's going on in this week's Edra. It's not that the sound wasn't loud enough for us to hear. It's that we weren't any more on the same wavelength as Hashem. We were previously on this very high level where, you know, the frequency of sound that he was emitting was one that we could understand, that we could hear. And then it's not that he changed. We changed by sinning. And suddenly we weren't any more able to tap into that sound, to his voice, to listen to what he was saying to us. So it could be that the voice is there the whole time and we just don't hear it. Now in this week's header, what's the voice actually telling Moshe? He's, Hashem's telling Moshe about all the carbonos. Now, why do you think Hashem's telling him about this right now? So what's happening is this day is the day of the dedication of the Mishkan. It's what we've all been building up for. We've been collecting all of the different materials that we needed and we've built the whole thing. We've finally put it together and today's the whole party. It's like the dedication ceremony. The day when actually, this is the first time Hashem's actually in the Mishkan, in the home that we built for him. And this is a place where he's talking to Moshe from. And what's the first thing he says? 
he talks about carbonus. What are carbonus? Sacrifices, we translate it as, but it's more than that. It's like a whole deeper concept. And the root of the word carbon is the word korov, to bring near. And I think it's like a very poignant message that Hashem is telling Moshe. He says, the first thing I want to tell you, I am in your house right now, the house that you built for me, that the Jewish people built for me. And I'm giving you this tool to be able to connect with me. I know you've all just sinned and you're on a different level to where you were at before, but that's okay. I've built into the system this um tool that you can reconnect with me regardless of what you do however much you sin i know you're gonna sin i'm expecting it that's okay i've built it into the system that there's a way back to me it's not like you do one thing and that's the end of the story i'm here right now even though you haven't made it back to the same level we're not on the same frequency anymore the rest of the people can't hear me anymore and I've got you as my go-between to communicate to them what I'm saying, but tell them I'm still here. My voice is still coming out. I'm still putting out this energy into the world. And I've given them this amazing way of reconnecting with me. And I don't mind that they sin. That's okay. It's expected. You're human beings. That's normal. You can't be perfect the whole time. You know, you're not angels. I've got angels, but that's not what you are. I'm not expecting that of you. I'm expecting you to sin and it's going to be, you know, harder times in your journey and easier times and will, you know, drift apart. And then you've got this way of reconnecting with me. And I just tell them, I'm still here. I'm in the house. I'm in the Mishkan that you built for me. And I'm still happy to be around you, even when you've sinned, even when you're kind of working on making your way back. And I think that's really nice idea for us to bear in mind that even within our own home, you know, you might be having a bad day or you might be having a bad week and your house might be a mess or your life might be a mess or your kids might be a mess or, you know, on a spiritual level. It's just, it's hard. It's not a great day. It's not a great week. It's been a hard year, but Hashem's still there. He's still in your house. He doesn't mind. He's okay with that. He knows that, you know, there's going to be ups and downs, but he's allowing us this tool to still always make our way back to him. And he's still going to be calling out to us with this voice, putting out his energy into the world in the hope that eventually we'll be on the wavelength again where we are able to hear it. So I hope you all have a good week and a good Shabbos.